Hey everyone, welcome back to POA for you. It's Leroy again, and today's topic source documents. This is at the request of Dakshayani. Dakshayani, I hope this is useful for you, and for the rest of you, I hope it benefits you as well. And if you have a friend who you think will find this helpful, please share this with your friend. Free resource for everyone. So let's get right into it. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the types and purpose of source documents and its corresponding journal entries. So let's see what we have here. Now, before we do that, let's do a little recap about the big picture. Now, I've touched on this before in one of my videos, and the first step of the whole POA concept is about transactions. And what supports transactions is actually source documents, right? Because if, for example, if you buy something, that's a transaction, and behind that purchase, you will have source documents proving that this purchase actually happened. Okay, and this video I'm referring to is go search on my channel, Must Watch Fundamentals of POA, The Big Picture, and it helps you understand this whole thing. So from source document, it proves transactions, and from transactions, there will be journal entries, and then ledger updates, trial balance, and then the statement of financial performance or position. So let's get right into source documents. There are six types of source documents you need to know for your syllabus, and they are receipts, invoice. This is one section where it talks about remittance, receipts, bank statements, payment vouchers, etc., credit and debit notes. And these are the purposes. So I'll go through them one by one. But before I do, you got to remember that source documents supports one of the accounting theories that you need to know, objectivity because objectivity tells you that you can't just have a transaction at your whim and fancy. You have to make sure those transactions and the records of those transactions are backed by objective source documents, source documents that can be verified, like receipts, like invoices, etc. So these things, okay? So if we look at the first two source documents, receipts and invoice, these are actually to support any purchase or sales transactions. Receipts, I mean, you, you go to uh, buy something you know, off the shopping mall, let's say if you go to Isetan and you buy a, a, a t-shirt, uh, they would give you a receipt because you have actually paid for it when you get the products. So it's usually to support cash purchase and sale. But there are certain things, there are certain uh, transactions where you don't actually need to pay for it. And then that would be a credit purchase and sale. And that's usually supported by an invoice. So let's take a look at what those look like. So receipts and invoice, like I said before, they are both source documents that support purchase and sale transaction. Receipts is cash. So everyone's been to a retail outlet, whether it's easy H&M, etc, etc, you will get a receipt for whatever that you bought. Now, invoices are a bit different. It tells you what you owe. Now, let's take, let's double click on these pictures to see what they look like. So, receipts, everyone knows, you know, it tells you um, what you bought and it tells you that you've paid $6.60 in this case through your credit card. You could pay cash as well, whatever. And this is an invoice that I got from Google and it tells you most importantly, yeah, what, what you bought, but actually how much you owe. So it says amount due and it gives you the due date as well. So here receipts again, confirmation of payment is here and invoice it tells you hey you've got to pay me six hundred dollars and by the 9th of september 2019 in this case all right one thing you got to understand that both the buyers and the sellers will have copies of both receipts and invoice and the buyers would record the purchase and the seller will record the sale okay so let's see what we have next and uh, we would talk about for these receipts and invoice what the journals and the journal entries would be. Journal entries for receipts, it depends on which point of view. If you are the seller, then the receipts will tell you you made a sale. And therefore, you would debit cash on hand because you receive cash and credit sale because sale is credit in nature. And buyers, if you bought something, then you would have bought inventory from a business point of view. If you buy something, these are purchased. If you purchase these goods to sell, then they are inventory. If you purchase these goods for other purposes, then it becomes some sort of expense and you would credit cash on hand. Okay. Now invoice, it will be very similar, but instead of cash on hand, it will be 
trade receivables or trade payables. So the seller, when they sell something on credit and they give an invoice, they would still credit sales, but they would debit trade receivables and buyer would debit inventory, but credit trade payables to, to recognize that they have, they were owed or they, they, they have now owed somebody something as a result of this purchase transaction. All right, let's take a look at the next section. Um, the purpose, is receipt of money. What proves the receipt of money? There will be receipt, which is what we showed earlier, you know, like the, the Isetan receipt, you know, you, you Isetan would now know that, hey, they've received $6.60 from somebody for the sale of something, right? Remittance advice and bank statement. So let's take a look at what these two are because it's a bit new for us now. Now, remittance advice is something like this, right? If you do a pay now transaction today uh, and pay someone something, then you will get an email to say that, hey, uh, or, or beg your pardon, if somebody paid you something, then you will get an email to say that you have received $50 from someone by your pay now account. So that's a remittance advice. And this informs you that the customer has paid. And the journal entries for this is because you receive cash then uh, in your bank, so it's debit cash at bank and credit trade receivables. Since after the customer's paid you, the trade receivable balance goes down. Now, from the buyer's perspective, they will get this remittance advice as well. And this remittance advice is a remittance advice that they have paid something and it will be debit trade payables, credit cash at bank because their cash at bank goes down after they've paid you. All right. Now let's look at bank statement. Now this is the best version of the bank statement I could find at Google. So uh, from Google and here it shows you on the deposit side that someone has deposited $500 uh, to you. And who is this person? And this is the uh, care and support. And this could be, you know, in here it says government payout, but you know, it could be your customer's name. Uh, so the bank statement actually does tell you how much you have received and who has paid you. And it also tells you how much you have paid because this is a withdrawal. This is a funds transfer to this account. It could be a payment to a certain account as well. And sometimes it would have your um, uh, supplier's name or whoever you've paid to the name of the person. Okay, so it tells us how much we paid and to who. Now, next is what's the double entry for this? For um, if you have got a deposit or receive a payment then you debit cash at bank because cash at bank balance actually goes up and then you credit trade receivables because now your customer owes you less as a result of that and the same thing for withdrawal or similarly for withdrawal and or payment made which is this part here uh you would debit trade payables because now you owe less so you debit trade payables because trade payables credit in nature so you owe less you would debit it and you would credit cash at bank now, the next one is payment of money, right? So receipts and payments, I've already showed you that that actually shows uh, payment of money that you have you have made. And uh, it depends on which perspective, it could also show you payment of money that someone has made to you, right? The new thing here is payment voucher. So what's a payment voucher? Let's take a look at that. Payment voucher looks like this, right? And this is where if I'm a company, you know, I'm a staff of a company and I want to make a payment. I would make a payment request. Uh, I'll write who I'm going to pay to and what invoices I'm paying for and the amount. And then I'll write this and then this payment gets approved by my manager who controls all the payment vouchers or the payment transactions. And it then takes the next step to create a check or uh, uh, takes the next step of uh, 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 arranging for a bank transfer all right now this uh, here shows received by this is uh, hopefully sometimes you get uh, your customer signing on it to say that hey I've received it but this doesn't always happen all right so this basically tells you who wh or what invoices the business is paying to or for right so who this uh, the who the, the 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 business is paying to and what invoices it's for okay the double entry, it's debit, trade, payables, credit, cash at bank. Because when you pay, cash at bank goes down and also you owe less to your suppliers. So trade payables goes down. So you debit trade payables. 
Okay, now next credit notes. This this is very commonly tested, right? They they uh, examiners like to test uh, whether you understand what credit notes are. And credit notes is, is essentially issued by the seller when you return goods or the seller made an uh, error when they invoiced you and they typically have overcharged you. So that's the purpose of that. And let's take a look at an example. Okay, so this is what a credit note looks like. And if you see, it says here, uh, in this example, it says wrong product on invoice. And this is a deduction of that. Or typically, this would say uh, for sales returns uh, made on this date and stuff like that. And, it, and this would be the amounts that uh, will be deducted as a result of the sales returns. So a credit note would reduce how much your customer owes you if you are issuing the credit note to them, right? And as a result of that, the double entry would be debit, sales, returns, credit, trade, receivables if you are issuing the credit notes because you are telling the your customers that now you owe me less because you have returned something to me. Uh, for the recipient of the credit note, then you would debit trade payables because now you owe less to your uh, supplier and you would credit inventory because you have actually returned your goods to the supplier. Now, lastly, we have debit notes. Debit notes are the opposite of credit notes. If uh, debit notes are to charge your customers more because you have previously undercharged them or you know, you're charging them for something that you are now uh, realizing that you should. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So this is a debit note example. And here, delivery fees is what you're charging them because you know, you sold them something. And when you sell them, typically, uh, so, uh, you sell them something, typically you would raise an invoice to charge them. But this is not goods that you're selling. So this is special delivery that the, your customers have asked you to arrange. So you said, no problem, I'll arrange for it, but you got to pay me back that for that delivery charge. And this is exactly what you're Doing. So it's building for less common transactions. Common transactions would be the goods that you are uh, you are selling to your customers. And less common transactions is like special requests like this, maybe delivery fee or other kind of stuff that you may need to charge on an ad hoc basis. Now let's look at the possible journal entries for this. If it's an undercharge of a, a, a billing that you've given to your customers before uh, for goods that you sold to them, then it will be debit trade receivables, credit sales, right? Uh, but if it's something for delivery fees, then it will be debit trade receivables as well. It could be credit something depending on how you originally accounted for the delivery fee. Right now, for the recipient, it would be debit inventory, credit trade payables because it will recognize that this delivery fee is part of the cost of buying the inventory that you've previously bought, and therefore it will increase the value of your inventory and credit trade payables because now you owe more as well. That's it. Six source documents for your information, and hope that's helpful. If you have a question, poa for you at gmail.com is how you can reach me, or you can reach me by this channel. I uh, hope that's helpful for you. And if you have any friends who you think could benefit from this, please share this with them. And I'll see you again very soon. Take care for now.